long retired for the evening, and the pitch dark of night had set in. Thick, heavy clouds and fog muscled their way into the sky, strangling any and all stars in moonlight. It was fall. The air was less than crisp for this time of year. It was stale, muggy, humid. There had been an odor of natural decay from the leaves earlier that day, but that all changed quickly as the stale air melted away and heavy winds and clouds rolled in. A bead of sweat dripped down his rugged face, collecting with more sweat under his beard at his still noticeably powerful jawline, and then down the front of his thick neck, onward to his round, bulging pecs. A storm that developed off the coast was bringing heavy rains and lightning later this evening. Or now. He had been trying to get home before this started. This night, like many others, he got caught while running errands in town and ended up helping a friend move some heavy appliance. He was a sucker for showing off his strength, especially when it involved helping someone, anyone less gifted in the strength department, and everyone was less gifted than he in the strength department. His headlights struggled to break through the growing mist. Though he drove a four-wheel drive, the roads surrounding his cabin were treacherous, even in the mildest conditions. Especially the dirt road leading to his shack, which needed attention badly. It had potholes that could swallow a Cutlass Supreme. Big, burly, handsome, and friendly. He was, by all accounts, the local Superman. He stood six foot three and carried more muscle on his frame than seemed humanly possible. He won any and every local weightlifting or arm wrestling contest he came across, and saved kittens from trees. If there were a stronger, nicer guy around, he had yet to be looking. There wasn't a soul nearby that didn't like him. If the bulging biceps didn't attract and win you over, the charisma and witty charm sure would. An irresistible combination for even the most incredulous curmudgeon. Just as he was navigating down County Road 12 past Johnson Cemetery, the rain intensified. The wipers battled in vain to keep up with the powerful onslaught of water, their upward motion hampered by the intense pressure. Hawk, who was as smart as he was strong, decided to pull over and wait for the rain to slack off. smirked ever so slightly when he realized where he'd chosen to take rest. Right in front of Gorman Manor. Of course, he knew this house well. No campfire story in the Tri-County area was complete without a hauntingly creepy tale about Gorman Manor. One learns, as an adult, 
that some ghost stories are contrived by overprotective parents not wanting their children wandering off into a dangerously dilapidated structure and tripping and falling through rotted floorboards onto a rusty nail or twenty, poking their precious little eyeballs out and bleeding to death before help can arrive. No, no. No mindful parent would want that for their child to perish in a condemned old gothic manner. So they create stories, which surprisingly work, mostly. The many stories came back to Hawk as the rain subsided long enough for him to see a candle or lantern light flickering inside the manor. The electricity must be out because of the storm. The rain quickly picked back up. Though Hawk could barely see his hand in front of his face, the light beckoned. A jovial spirit, who has never met a stranger, had also never met the new tenants of this old home. Thinking about it, he hadn't heard too much chatter from the townsfolk about them either. Only that someone had finally bought the place. Some eccentric couple from up north with old money. They need old and new money to fix up this old house, he thought to himself. He drove up the winding drive and as close to the front door as possible. He grabbed his flashlight in the glove box and headed towards the door. The door not locked or latched properly, began to open. Hello? 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 He yells into the grand foyer, even more grand and dilapidated than when he defied the local childhood rule and broke in as a kid his flashlight jolting around the room, looking for signs of life. <clears throat> Hello? Anybody there? Hello? Uh, I don't mean to frighten you, but I had to pull over in front of your house and thought I'd come take this opportunity to introduce myself. Everyone else around this town knows me, so y'all should too. I'm Hawk. Crazy storm out, huh? I really don't mean to intrude. I've got some beers in the truck if y'all want to come out and sit on the porch and watch it roll by. His legendary charisma and charm seemed dampened by the house. If there were souls inside, they weren't taking the bait. He realized his imposing frame was probably incredibly frightening for anyone inside, especially on a night like this. So he closed the door gently, and already dripping wet, paused before heading back to his truck. Before he knew it, he was stunned. His flashlight fell from his powerful hands and rolled off the porch, into the overgrown bushes and weeds below. His 280 pounds of muscle had been whipped around. What stood in front of him was impossible to make out in the darkness. He felt a strong force on his right shoulder, a hand, perhaps, holding him in place. Hey, I'm Hawk. Can't really drive in this nonsense, so I thought I'd come introduce myself. There's a beer I was going to share with you in my truck. I'm already soaked, so 
I don't mind running to grab it. Unless you have another eye. <laughs> Hawk, in all his hairy, beefy, muscular meat, could not move. A flash of lightning lit up the sky. In that brief second, he saw before him a man, creature, a beast, so terrifying that any lesser man would have fallen over and died from shock right there on the spot. But not our powerful hawk. He knew it must be some sort of Halloween costume. Hey man, I guess I'm gonna go. I'm not wanted here and that's cool. I'm sorry, I really just dropped by to make new friends, wish you luck fixing up this place, and offer up a helping hand if you ever need it. Uh, you, you've got a strong grip on my shoulder. You, you can let go and I'll be on my way. Hawk. Still trying to remain polite, he was on their property. Reached up to his shoulder, where the powerful force was gripping him, he grabbed hold and began to release the vice grip the being had on him. The being's arm, if that's what it was, did not budge. <clears throat> Come on, buddy. You can't be that strong. Oh, come on. You let go, or I'm gonna have to get rough with you. <clears throat> I don't know if you can see in this darkness, but, uh, I'm a very solid guy. But, uh, I prefer to use these muscles for good, not for fighting. <clears throat> he flexed his massive bicep as it rose to 24 solid inches challenging the threads in his sleeve. <clears throat> Go ahead, man. You can feel it if you want. Everyone loves to cop a few of these guns. He was trying to lighten the mood. But the being wasn't interested. As he flexed his giant bicep, which continued to bulge to an impressive size, the being grabbed his wrist. Okay, okay, maybe this guy wants to feel my wrist and giant forearm first, or maybe he just can't see, Hawk thought. He continued to flex. The sleeve on his shirt finally gave in to the bolding bicep. Ah, oh, shit, he murmured. There goes another. As he flexed, however, his powerful arm began to pry open. He struggled to maintain his position, but the opposing force was strong, and he found his arm moving in the opposite direction from where he was pulling. Hawk wasn't accustomed to being manhandled. His massive frame, admired by all, could rival any cartoon movie superhero or TV wrestler in existence. A voice inside his head told him to run. You better skedaddle on out of here. But he's never had to back down before, and he wasn't going to start now. All right, that's it, he spoke with an air of defiance. No more Mr. Nice Guy. And with his free hand, he swung his massive arm toward the being. jaw-breaking punch didn't land. His muscular arm stopped cold. The being now held both arms, outstretched like a crucifix. This muscular, hulking powerhouse of a man stood there, stunned as his undefeatable strength was overpowered by a stronger force. And that was it.
As cliche as it sounds, there's not a better way to put it. He was never seen nor heard from again. The police showed up the next day when they saw his truck up on the hill, but if there was any blood on the scene, it had been rinsed away by the storm. The only resident of the house at the time was an elderly lady, not a couple as had been reported prior. She cooperated with detectives and was cleared. Because of Hawk's stature in town, rumors circulated that he was a government experimental super soldier and was destroyed by a darker force that had more sophisticated and powerful technology. Other reports, following the same super soldier theory, was that someone found out and Hawk had no choice but to stage his disappearance. Some speculate that Hawk was perceived as an intruder and was attacked by the old lady's son and Hawk accidentally killed him. He then paid the elderly lady, who apparently hated her son anyway, and disposed of him in the swamp, and then disappeared. The story I just told was one of many stories surrounding this old house. So, no matter how tough or invincible you're feeling, stay away from that place. Do not ever go up that driveway, you hear? <laughs>